Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, welcome um, to our first public service announcements. Um, we're so excited to have you here. If you've been to some of our past virtual service talks, um, this is a very similar info session. Um, so we're just here today to kind of share some upcoming community service and engagement opportunities with you all. And so um, kind of our agenda for today, uh, we're gonna start off with some introductions so we can kind of get to know um, each other. Uh, then we're gonna go over some of our upcoming community service events. And then we're gonna go over a cat life tutorial for how you can keep track of your community service hours. And then we're gonna be talking about some other events that we have going on. And then lastly, we'll finish off with where you can find us after this um, to keep updated with other events that are happening. Ready. so starting with introductions, if you feel comfortable doing so, um, please feel free to share your name, your major, the club or org you're attending on behalf of, uh, describe your club or org in one word. And if you're not part of a club or org, that's totally fine. We welcome everyone. Um, but feel free to describe the type of service opportunities you're interested in. Um, yeah, so we can get started maybe with any of the people in this room. If you're online, feel free to type in the chat as well. Maybe um, I can go first. Um, so my name is Namitha. I am a fourth year uh, public health major. Um, I am the student lead at the Community Engagement Center. Um, and we're so excited to have you here today. We're really glad to be able to do this both in person and remotely. Um, and yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Angelica. Um, and I am a fourth year public health major as well. And I'm a student staff here at the Community Engagement Center. And I will also be help presenting with this public service announcement. I am a first year and my major is business economics and business management. And I am a student staff at the Community Engagement Center. Thank you, Chidi. All right, thank you so much everyone for sharing. Uh, if you're online and you want to share something, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, and if at any point you have any questions about the slides that are to come, feel free to ask us either in the chat or by raising your hand. And so let's get started uh, with some of our upcoming events. We are just starting off the school year, so we have quite a few that we're really happy to share with you all. And so the first one is called the Community Partner Jamboree. So that's actually this coming week. Um, it's Wednesday, September 21st. It is 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Scholars Lane. Uh, and basically what this event is, is we're um, working with a lot of the local nonprofits and organizations in the area um, who have volunteering opportunities for the students here. And so if you are interested in kind of exploring different organizations um, and picking an opportunity that might suit your interests the best, um, this is a really great chance to do so. Um, basically everyone will be tabling um, and you'll be able to stop by everyone's tables. Um, and if you visit five community partners, uh, we will be giving out free tie-dye shirts to everyone. So another great plus of that. Um, so that is this coming Wednesday. And then the next event that we have coming up is called the Restorative Justice Retreat. Um, and so if we they are accepting volunteers and basically this event um, will involve volunteers leading workshops and inspiring middle school students to learn more about the importance of restorative justice. Um, so in order to participate in this, um, there is a required training. It is on Tuesday, September 27th at 4 p.m. Um, and it is on campus, so it's at CLB2 390. And the conference date is Friday, October 7th at 8 a.m. It is at Los Banos um, Junior High School and transportation will be provided um, since we know it is quite a distance away. Um, so we'll be taking care of that part for anyone who isn't able to drive themselves. And so if you're interested, we do have a sign up. Um, it's this link right here at the bottom. 
and any volunteer anyone who volunteers will receive um, a gift card after attending and training the event so there's an extra something in there um, and then I believe it should also qualify for cat life hours and we'll explain yeah thank you and so if if that if you didn't hear that on the call basically um volunteers will also be getting lunch provided that day since it is an all-day event um and then they will also get a t-shirt um so a lot of great things um with this event so if it is something you're interested in feel free to check out the link at the bottom and if you have any questions again feel free to drop it in the chat or raise your hand um, we would love to help you out with whatever questions that you have and then the next series of volunteering events that we have is part of the forestry challenge. And so what that is, is it's an academic event for high school students in technical forestry and current forestry topics. Participants basically spend four days in the forest learning about ecology and management of the forested landscapes that provide communities with water, recreational opportunities, wood products, and wildlife habitats. Basically, they need about 25 to 30 volunteers per event. And there's a bunch of different event dates. Um, so there's one at Shasta, September 25th to 28th. There's one in Santa Cruz, October 12th to 15th. There's one in El Dorado, October 26th to 29th. And then there's two sessions in San Bernardino in November. Um, we know a lot of our volunteers love the outdoors. And so we wanted to offer this opportunity for anyone who is interested. And we'll go a little bit more into the different roles. Um, so they have a bunch of different roles. So there's really something for everyone here. Uh, the first one is the registration volunteer. Um, so you would collect participant paperwork, hand out t-shirts, um, have participants sign photo maps um, and other registration related tasks. So this is just on one day. Um, so if you're not available for the whole event, that's totally fine. They are very flexible and willing to work with your schedule. And then the second role is the night hike leader. Um, so they just need people with a background in wildlife biology to help kind of keep the group together. And then another one is the field training volunteers. And so they teach students how to use forestry tool, tools, identify basic tree species, use an identification key. Um, and so for this one, they, they do say that a forestry background is helpful, but it's not needed and they'll help you out with whatever um, things you might need to learn in order to do this role. And then there's also the field trip assistant. Um, so in this role, you would help students collect data in the field, possibly including tree population size, species composition, basal area, canopy cover in fuel loading. So for this one, they are asking for people with the forestry background. And then ask a forester, so you'd meet with student teams to discuss their solutions to the given focus topic. There's also field testing, so you'd basically be an exam proctor to monitor the testing stations and keep students on schedule. This one, no experience is necessary. And if you've noticed, most of these are just a one day at a certain period of time. So it's, it's very flexible again. And then some more tasks, photographer, videographer, to take some photos and videos throughout the event. Um, and they do prefer experience for this one. Presentation judges, um, to listen to student presentations and ask questions after each presentation, fill out a score sheet. Uh, no experience necessary, but you would need to spend an extra 30 minutes reading the materials prior to the event. And then also presentation timekeepers. So you would be proctor student presentations, keep track of time, show flashcards with time remaining. Um, and no experience necessary for this one as well. And so they, they ask that if you're able to spend as little as a few hours or as much as a few days, uh, please visit their website and follow the link to the volunteer registration form at the top of the home page. Um, so that is just forestrychallenge.org. And then some additional benefits of volunteering. Um, so you could get record your service hours in cat life. Again, we'll go over that towards the end so you know how to do that. Um, they also offer gas reimbursement. I know a lot of the parks and forests that this event takes place in, it might be a little bit farther from Merced. Um, so if it is a long drive, um, um, we do offer gas reimbursements. And then they're also providing meals and housing um, if you're gonna be staying there for multiple days. Um, and then there's also a free event t-shirt for volunteers. And then their scheduling is also very flexible. That's like the biggest thing we wanted to emphasize because there are different roles that happen on different days and different times. So there's something for everyone. And then before we move on to the next thing, are there any questions about any of the opportunities that we shared? I know the forestry challenge had quite a few details. So if there's any questions, feel free to ask now, um, or if you think of them later, you can ask whenever it comes to you. All righty, let's go ahead and move on to the next opportunity. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to Angelica. 
Thank you, Namisa. So our next opportunity is with Why You Lead. Um, and so this is for those students who are interested in a long-term service opportunity, um, or maybe you're interested in mentorship, or you maybe you're interested in education as a career down the line. Um, we highly encourage this opportunity. Um, with Why You Lead is a mentorship program focused on uplifting Golden Valley High School students. And so Golden Valley High School is a um, high school in Merced for context. Um, and so for this opportunity, you would be creating lesson plans and workshops with other mentors um, who are also UC Merced students, and you would be help uh, facilitating these workshops to high school students. And so these workshops or lesson plans can be on any topic. It could be on how to budget in college or how to be a high school, um, how to transition into college as a high school student and anything um, from that sort. We actually have an info session um, next Friday, um, September 23rd here on campus um, in CLB2 um, 290. And we also have a um, upcoming park cleanup. And so this will be at Fakrens Park here in Merced. And it'll be on Saturday, October 8th, um, and it will start at 8 a.m. Um, if you are a student that needs transportation, there is a bus leaving at 7.30 a.m. from the UC bus stop. And I also wanna add that car cleanups are one of our most popular events. So we definitely recommend you to bring a friend along. And the next opportunity is Reading Succeed, um, which is hosted by the Merced Library. Um, and so they are looking for volunteers who want to make an impactful change to the Merced County by tutoring individuals on their English language skills. And so they are essentially looking for tutors. Um, so this could be in person or it could be virtual tutoring um, or a conversation group. And, and so this is really cool for those students who are looking to build their resume or build their professional experience. Um, and the time commitment for this opportunity would be three to four hours uh, per week and no experience is needed and training will be provided by the Merced County. Um, if you're interested in joining, um, they have we have their contact contact info listed here with their number and their email, and you can also visit them in person. Yes, they will also be on the Jamboree on Wednesday, so feel free to stop by their table. And so we also wanted to add in a virtual opportunity. So this is the Smithsonian Museum's um, volunteer opportunity where you can volunteer to be a, a transcription volunteer. So here um, you would learn how to transcribe or review historic writing. Um, and you would also be helping make history more accessible and inclusive. Um, and a cool thing about this is that you can volunteer at your own pace. And I also wanna add in there that if you're interested in uh, maybe a research position on campus down the line, this is a really cool opportunity to get that um, research background experience um, that could really help boost your resume once you're applying for that research position. And the volunteer link is here below. And we also have ongoing service opportunities. Uh, one of them is the US USDA food distribution volunteering opportunity. Um, one of them actually happened this morning um, and the next one will be happening October 21st. And for this event, uh, you help sort and give food to uh, members in need within the Merced community. And this is uh, this opportunity is located in Merced College. If you wanna learn more or get registered for this event, um, please follow this link. And the next opportunity is a D Street Shelter. Um, and they are always accepting volunteers looking um, to use their kitchen to help prepare and serve um, dinners on their, um, in their shelter. And this is really cool for uh, groups, large groups of volunteers. So if you're maybe you're involved in a club, we definitely recommend to um, invite your members to volunteer. Um, you can make an event out of it and you know get a lot of people going to um, volunteer here. Or if you wanna um, volunteer, you can also bring a friend as well. And now, so before I go to the next opportunity, you may have noticed a lot of these uh, check mark stickers. And so this is a sticker that we call that it qualifies. It's like a stamp of approval for Cat Life. So essentially, Cat Life is a digital tool that um, helps you track, keep track, and log all of your volunteering hours. Um, and we will teach you, uh, give you a quick tutorial and six steps on how to um, 
get started on logging those hours. So you can start, uh, you can follow this tutorial by scanning this QR code. Awesome. So if you're on a laptop, you can also uh, type in catlife.ucmerced.edu. And so once you're in this, um, on this page, you can click on forms on the top right corner. And then it might uh, prompt you to sign in with your UC Merced email, so you can do that. So step two would be on the forms page, you would click on apply for opportunity. And once you've clicked on apply for opportunity, you will click on the service hours and it will have like a drop down menu and you will click, um, you will enter the opportunity type. And then you will also enter the amount of hours that you completed to, to the right. Um, we also recommend to specify the type of service that was done here. Um, so if it was personal service, it could be um, perhaps maybe working uh, something that it was not um, organized by an organization, but if it was organization service, it would be um, maybe it was hosted, for example, um, the park cleanups are hosted by Mayor Serrato and the Merced community. So that's an example of an organization service. And the next step would be if you clicked organization service um, in step three, Specify the club or the organization through the drop down menu. And if you clicked on personal service, proceed to step six. So, for the next step, um, we request to fill in the sections below to the best of your ability. Um, and we definitely recommend to use um, maybe at least one sentence or more than one sentence. And this is just to verify um, that you uh, can. Remember as much as possible um, how what volunteering event you participated in, um, and this is just to verify that you were actually at the event. And this section is also required. And the last step is once you filled out each section, um, you will press submit for approval to the top right corner, and then you will get an email once your hours have been approved, and then you're all done. But if you, they are not approved, um, maybe you put in the wrong number for the contact info, or maybe you, the email doesn't match with the person of contact, um, then we will reject the hours. And so when, once that's done, we'll insert a reason why, and then you'll also get to see why it was rejected. And you can always um, edit that info and then submit it again for approval. Awesome, and that concludes our public service announcements. Um, if you'd like to uh, follow us um, in more events like this, uh, feel free to follow our Instagram. We are UC Merced at, C at UC Merced CC. And we also um, have a website where we post uh, more events where you can register um, maybe through, um, we also have a calendar where we keep track of our events. Um, and if you'd like to visit us in person, we are located in KL190. And we also have a Facebook, so we also post uh, events like this on there as well. And um, so yeah, give us a follow to stay updated. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, does anyone have any questions before we wrap up? I'm ready, if it comes to you later, feel free to contact us through anything that's listed on the slide. Yes, yeah, thanks thank you so everyone. Much. <laughs> thank you. Yeah.